Greetings one and all and welcome to my 5v5 season review. This season was a great one and a very interesting one in a lot of ways. Uh, even starting from just the overall stats. I got 6-3 and three, which is basically my benchmark for a great season. Uh, I think I have done 7-2 and two before but it's very rare. Uh, 6 and 3 is about as good as I can hope for. Uh, but even though I won twice as many as I lost, I actually got outscored on average and that's just because Star-Lord destroyed me. Um, that was the match where it was the hardest defense I'd ever seen, and I didn't even clear uh, two... I cleared two zones and then didn't clear the last land zone or even get to fleets. So that really hurt my overall score, uh, which... And it was a really close. This is the closest differential I've ever had. 1707 average versus 1702 average. Um, this was also a really interesting season because set 9 datacrons were so dominant. Set 8 was barely existent. And we'll see that uh, in some of my defensive stats of what I actually laid out. Uh, so let's get into the granular team-by-team uh, -team review. So typically I am looking at General Skywalker for the first team, but I did not set him on defense much this time. I needed him for Seer on offense. Uh, so the first team I'm looking at that I set every round was Malgus, Darth Malgus team. Uh, using Marauder as the fifth instead of Talon. Talon went with Treya. I had the ability block Datacron at least for the last uh, two full rounds. Um, and then also had a pretty hefty amount of defense, almost 200%, and some good stats otherwise. And I consider Malgus to have been extremely successful on defense this season. Uh, three holds overall, average barons of 53.67. So even when I wasn't getting a hold, I was usually getting some kind of banner reduction. Uh, people were able to beat it with General Skywalker, but it was bad banners. Uh, the 64s and 65s, those are pretty much Sith Eternal and Watt. Uh, and then one other Galactic Legend, which I forget. Uh, but I drew four in total. Uh, and then I also got one loss for my Jedi Master Luke with Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, which is crazy impressive uh, because as far as I understood it, Jedi Knight Cal would just destroy Malgus easily even without Giant Master Luke, uh, but in this case, the only attempt was with Giant Master Luke that I saw Giant Knight Cal, and it lost. So, extremely productive season from my Malgus team. Even more productive in my estimation was the Dark Trey team with Savage, Double Omicron, uh, with Talon. I could have a Triple Omicron here, but I don't know if I'm ready to pull the trigger on that yet, because it did so well anyway. Uh, this number here is not a mistake. There were nine wins against uh, this Treya team, and nine of them were Galactic Legends. Uh, there was no win that wasn't a Galactic Legend, which is crazy. Um, it's six of them were Supreme Leader Kylo, and even those though there's one, um, they got low-ish banners, like at the highest 61 all season, which is not bad for Galactic Legend counters. Or, it's not bad for Galactic Legend draws on defense. Only got one hold. Um, it still averaged out to 56.88 banners out of a par of, 50, of 65. So that's really good. And I, I understand why people are using Supreme Leader Kylo. Just using a Dark Side Galactic Legend neutralizes Trey's Omicron. Uh, so that combined with a little bit of extra defense, offense, health. Like the this level 3 max protection and health increases, which are crazy, and then ability block. Um, it, uh, Sith Eternal Emperor wasn't a good counter on his own. Some people didn't use that as much, but super successful season from Treya. Um, it was so valuable on the front wall, so it got the MB MVP for me this season. Next up, we got Zori Bliss team. Uh, Finn lead, but it's honestly his Zori team. And this is a little bit more disappointing for me. Um, it's still a really strong team, and it could be better if I had Rose instead of OG Poe. Uh, but they, they lost a step without their set 7 uh, Zori Datacron, uh, and I think people just started to figure out how to go about them. Uh, there was a few Star Killers in there. The most common was Afra, and that's what I used every single time against Zori with great success. Uh, so I'm not too surprised that people are figuring it out. I mean, if people are watching me and at all like they're gonna see that I'm doing that and probably a lot of others uh, so I'm, I'm kind of advertising the way to handle my own defense there too I did draw two Galactic Legends from it uh, I think someone used JML and then someone used Java I believe uh, but no holds and a pretty high average banner rating of 61.67 banners 
not super great. Uh, people also were using Jedi Knight Revan. Uh, so I think Giant Revan, Star Star Killer, and Afra were the main ones. Uh, but yeah, not super encouraging from her. But the fatty did his job, uh, and it wasn't overwhelming, but he did everything I could expect him to do. I just had the bulk to Aircrown level three mainly. Some good defense, 78%, but that's not a ton. It's mainly like one level seven or eight roll. Uh, I figured if I put just tons and tons of defense, like one of my 200s. Uh, people are just going to way overkill it anyway, so would be put to such good use. Uh, I had four Galactic Legends drawn, four holds for an average of 53 banners, which is a very low average banner count. Um, and there weren't too many repeats in the counters used. So Supreme Leader Kylo was the most common, but that was only twice, and that wasn't great banners either time. Surprisingly, there weren't too many Night Sisters used. Uh, the one time it was used semi successfully, uh, it didn't killed the Java team right away. They still had to clean it up. So in my eyes, that's still a great use. Uh, it's a defensive hold, so that really helps with banners. Um, they're not having to use a Galactic Legend in that case, but it still helps me out. If I'm not dropping at all, uh, it gives me a leg up. So Java did a great job, especially in the average banners department. I almost forgot one interesting thing, super interesting, was this counter I saw. Palpatine lead, Marjade, Piet, Darth Vader and Lord Vader, and it worked in a relatively short amount of time, three minutes, 20 seconds. That is extremely interesting to me. I've never seen this before. Um, I don't know what's behind it, but that splits up a Starkiller team and it takes Lord Vader. I, I don't know, is this better than a Lord Vader lead? I mean, you can get a loop going with Mara Jade and Darth Vader. I guess you get days from Lord Vader and then Mara Jade and Palpatine can go off like crazy. It's super interesting. I just, I don't know. I don't really get it, but kind of cool. Next up, we got Mr. General Grievous, uh, and he was extremely successful in my estimation. Um, he was mainly a great Wampa draw. People tried Wampa solo on him four times, and all of them were losses, uh, which is just kind of crazy to, to consider. People were still trying it. Um, I haven't felt comfortable with Wampa vs. Grievous for a while, especially with some of these newer Datacrons. This extra health and protection really ramps up General Grievous, uh, and plus a little bit of extra health in the stats too. Uh, so he's going to be able to take out Wampa no problem. So all those times I got a hold, uh, and they got one more hold. I think that was someone trying to dash team up front. Didn't draw any Galactic Legends, but still average bands of 51.89 is extremely low, and it might have been the lowest out of any of my teams. Um, I could have taken him for offense, but mainly for offense, it's kind of a niche counter for like star killer teams. I didn't see any this season. So I'm really glad I kept him on defense all season and didn't stick Newt with Trench, uh, cause Trench, uh, still not doing that great. Continuing with the droid faction, we had a sortie team that I set almost pretty much every round. Uh, I switched up the lineup. I did have Dark Trooper in there one time, uh, but I took him out. I don't think it did extra this season. Um, but with the extra bulkiness, they are harder to handle. Uh, people did find success with Bad Batch, uh, but I did get three holds too. Um, I gave them a little bit of extra defense, some crit damage, some extra protection, uh, but all that bulkiness, I at least thought made them a threat to stop a uh, Bad Batch team, especially with this Dispel ability where um, Zordi might be able to shrug off buff immunity, but they do have a locked buff immunity, so that didn't quite pan out. Average banners 57.67. I mean, mostly that's from the holds. Um, if they didn't get a drop, if I didn't get a drop with them, it was pretty high banners. So this wasn't a stellar team uh, on defense, uh, but there's very little I could have done with any of these characters on offense. The only thing I could think of is taking R2 with a JMK for our mirror to get full banners, uh, but I don't really care too much about doing that. Next up, we got Dash Rendar along with Hondo, Quill IG-11, and Nest. I did get four holds with this, and I think some of the holds were just Nest being left over when they tried CLS or something. Uh, but people tried to use Starkiller like four times, uh, so that was a very common counter to it. I didn't set Ray much on defense. I set her like one time. Who had their Starkillers left over, and then they get to the back, and I think they just use it as a safe win for Dash. Uh, but when they didn't have Starkiller available, it was almost always a difficult 
uh, team to handle. Uh, they have great defense, great speed, especially with the Hondo Omicron, um, and great durability, and you can't just blitz them down with CLS or a Terminator train team because Nest is there to uh, tap the brakes. I gave them a lot of extra offense, 25% on a stats. Uh, Datacron stat is great. 30% crit damage, that's not tons, but it does add up uh, with the offense too. No Galactic Legends drawn, uh, but I think overall 54 banners is worth it. A few extra holds worth it. It was a great team on the back wall for me all season. And this is a new team I haven't reviewed defensively to date because I hadn't had her to put on defense in fives. But it is the Reva team, um, which in theory is a super strong team. It's one of the few teams I used to set eight Datacrons on. Uh, this is a different view here because they're expired and I couldn't grab it in game. They had the damage immunity sometimes, uh, sometimes it gave them the plus 100% damage. Uh, they had 43% extra protection here, 80, almost 80% 80 crit damage. So that was a very focused Datacron, previously my JML Datacron. Um, but predictably, people were using Trey against it, which I'm actually fine with because Trey is an amazing team that's going to have used somewhere. Um, I don't know if I can draw it away to my Reva team as opposed to, like, um, I don't know. Trey on Trey or something, because uh, that can work, and then I wouldn't be able to draw a Galactic Legend with Treya. Um, I'll take it. Someone did use Jabba too, so that was the one Galactic Legend drawn, and it was a win. Uh, but I did get a hold uh, against a Treya one time, so Treya is not absolutely 100%. So at least one time they had to use their Treya, and they didn't get a full win out of it. Um, is this worth it on defense? I don't know. Um, it's something they had to contend with, and I could have made good use of it on offense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did sometimes. I brought it on offense a little bit, but it's kind of hard to know what to do. If I bring it on offense, it's always hard to, like, give up something else good and put it on defense, because I'm all like, oh, I kind of need that, I need that, but I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. Probably not the best team on defense. And another newer team uh, to my defense that also used set 8 was the Tuscan team. And I had pretty much the optimal, optimized uh, Tuscan Datacron as far as the abilities. Uh, the stats, you know, they could have used some work, but I was low on reroll mats after trying to get this perfect. Uh, the perfect setup was the protection up, Tuscan Warrior level nine, and then the wordy level six, where it's giving them tons of extra turn meter. So you get a lot of dots and you're recovering health and protection uh, from those dots. Uh, so it makes them a lot harder to deal with. And I think it was relatively successful. Uh, people were using Bounty Hunters pretty effectively. Uh, there was Boss lead twice. There was also a Fennec Sean lead. Um, which, you know, it, I think that's a pretty cheap counter to it. Uh, no one successfully used Raz, which is surprisingly... Well, it's, it's not too surprising with the perfect Datacron. Uh, but my go-to is Raddus against Tuskens. But I think a lot of people still set Raddus on defense. Um, anyway, I did draw one Galactic Legend. Someone used JML, just didn't want to mess with it. Uh, but it's also on the top wall, so maybe they just had extra left over. Four holds overall, and then average bearings 55.89 is nothing too shabby. Although I did get two drops in one battle, so I got less banners taken off there. Uh, and when I, they did beat it first try, they got pretty good banners, got over 60. So it wasn't like amazing, amazing, but as a team, I didn't really know what to do with on offense. So I think they did their part big time. And last full team review, uh, it was only for three battles, three matches, because I didn't get Seer and Ahsoka Fulcrum up and running until the last round. Uh, but I got one hold with them, no Galactic Legends drawn, and average banners of 57.33, but that's just because of one drop. Otherwise, it was pretty good banners. Uh, so... You know, not too great. I think Malakos is going to make this team really insane. And what I advertise as the Galactic Legend level team is using Maul instead of Kylo Ren. But I needed Maul to take out Java teams on offense. So I didn't have the best of the best teams here. Uh, but it's still, it's really strong. I mean, I think they used like Star Killer and then a Jedi Knight Revan team with Jedi Knight Cal. So nothing shabby. I got through it in the first shot. So even though it wasn't Galactic Legend draw, Still pretty solid. Um, I use the plus 100% damage because that's going to come into play a lot when you have all that protection up, bonus protection, and the stacking offense. Uh, this data cross is going to be gone for next season, so uh, we'll see what I use. Probably, probably a set nine uh, for extra bulk. Um, but by the way, I don't like the new portrait for Ahsoka Fulcrum or Thrawn. I think 
Well, Ahsoka Fulcrum, it's it's not like terrible, terrible, but the new one for Thrawn just looks awful. Like, I don't know. It, it looks way worse. I know they updated it for the new show, but I thought old cartoon Thrawn looked very distinguished, and I don't think I didn't want them to get rid of it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, those are the teams, and there's just one more match I wanted to show a special review on. And that special review is for my second to last match against Pest Dudu, and this is the one where I set JML on defense and live streamed. And I just thought it'd be interesting to look over what all they used against that Jedi Master Luke um, that took seven battles and got nowhere. So first off, China Mirror, that is not something I would think is doomed to failure. So they didn't come out the gate weak, uh, used to JML, with 84% protection, mind you. That is... I would expect that to work, but it timed out. I guess this was too fast, too furious. Uh, I didn't have tons of extra protection on it, but I did have tons of defense, which, you know, theoretically doesn't matter against the true damage there. But J JKR, Basila, and Jolie are super durable here from Basila level 9. So that got nowhere, and it looks like he kept it. So then he had a preloaded JML to deal with. Uh, CLS came in, didn't make any headway. I mean, I guess actually nothing made any headway, so I uh, tried GG, force quits, uh, tried a mall team, tried a weird bear star killer team. Uh, but yeah, that. I, know there's, I thought there was more. There's seven battles. Uh, is that shown all of them? One, two. Three, four, five. Hmm, five. I thought I had seven, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that was quite a tanky team. I probably should try it again next season. Um, I'll probably get some good results, but yeah, that was pretty cool to see JML holding down the line like that. So there you have it. There is my full 5v5 season review for July, August 2023. Uh, it was a fun season, a very successful season for me, and you know, I got a lot more holds across the board than I'm used to. Uh, which was great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed and learned something. I enjoy doing these, taking a look back at my season, because even though I recommend looking at your performance week to week, I get pretty lazy to do that myself. Uh, so it's nice to take a look uh, at the whole season and prepare for next season, even though it's going to be a month later. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to like and sub if you did enjoy, and let me know what you think. How'd your season go? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. See you later.